Jim, and I appreciate the opportunity. I especially appreciate that this series, which is so very important, and appreciate all the people. Well, buddy, I think you're frozen there. Am I frozen? Okay, I think we can hear you again. Try it again. Okay, Mr. Edelstein, I wanted to ask you, a lot of your testimony has focused really on on permitting and siting reforms and, and how any funding should go hand in hand with those efforts. I just wanted to ask you, could you could you tell me some of the top issues that, that are facing the wireless industry now when it comes to, to expediting build out? Well, you know, the, the, the top issue really is just is just having enough capital to build to the entire country. I think that, you know, it's very important in terms of a bipartisan infrastructure bill that, that we get the substantial investment to be able to get to that to that last mile in rural America. We talked about with the Congress, Congressman Welch. Uh, you know, the business case gets tougher as you get out there, and having, you know, costly burdens makes it more difficult to make that happen. I mean, for example, you, you introduced a bill, uh, I saw in the package that uh, section 6409 and makes it so they're not subject to the NIPA, which is something that, uh, you know, the FCC has worked on. Um, I think, you know, this kind of useful legislation to codify the good work the FCC has done uh, would be helpful, particularly for co-location. Again, you know, it should be the easiest thing to do if you're going to co-locate, if you're going to upgrade so you can get service out to more people. That should be the last place you can get a regulatory and uh, we appreciate your, your, your thoughts on that. Well, and I appreciate you bringing up my bill and, and mentioning it. It's called the Proportion, Proportional Reviews for Broadband Development Act. It's really just common sense, and it, it really just says that, you know, it, the changes, unless they're significant, but these these minor changes that, that don't really impact the footprint of the, of, the, of a tower, of a wireless tower, that those won't have to go through the the environmental or the historical review, and that this would speed things up, which would expedite this and, and help everyone, and, and obviously save us a lot of money. Can you think of any, give us any examples where this has um, happened before? Absolutely. I mean, regularly, we're trying to co-locate on an existing uh, tower, and, and there could be an environmental or historical review. How, what has changed in the history since you put a tower up there and you're trying to put the power tower that's already been sitting there and you've already done it historically? You put it again sometimes. I mean, this is just if it take a year. It could take, um, you know, quite a bit of time. And there's no more environmental impact. There's no historic impact. This is a tower city. Uh, so, you know, it's just common sense. And this is something that the federal government has with its own authority. It's not going to talk federal rules or something. So, nonsensical on an area where the federal government is trying to get broadband out there. I think that kind of reasonable a step, you know, the municipalities won't be upset enough to the price of the federal government, not municipalities. Um, and, it, it's perfect. It's perfect. And, and not, yeah, obviously it has a monetary impact, but it, the time factor too. I mean, you know, if, if, a, if a child misses a year, has got to wait a year in order to get high-speed internet, I mean, that's a year behind that they are. Yeah, you're exactly right. We're talking about 5G, which will allow uh, school children to do all kinds of things they can't do. Multidimensional learning, 3D, uh, it'll be very exciting for the school kids. We've seen how important it's in learning is now with the pandemic. Let's get that 5G equipment up there and not have to wait a year or for an historic environmental review when there's already a perfectly wireless facility sitting there. Get that piece of equipment up there for more equipment. And this supports the efforts that the EPC has done to improve. Um, um, uh, the treatment of uh, existing facilities under Section 64 of the I, I, I was at the Georgia State Legislature today, and, and, you know, they were making a big push. You know, you've always heard of Georgia. There are two Georgias, so the land and everywhere else. We have a large rural community in Georgia, and one of the things that they're talking about is cell reception mapping, and especially during the pandemic. How are your members uh, addressing that, the mapping issue? Well, I'm very pleased that this is the funding for mapping uh, that was approved uh, by, by Congress because we do need to have the maps. If you're in a target where you have uncertain areas, you need to know where they are. And it's been an issue. We've worked out for many years trying to run those maps. And the FCC needed those funds provided um, eight past year in, in, the, in, the, in the bill. So we're grateful for that. I think that will finally enable us to get more accurate maps and target uh, the need for this new. 
Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. And I yield back.